Hello and welcome to the Ghibli Rewatch series of the Overly Animated Podcast, where we'll be going through every Studio Ghibli movie chronologically from the beginning. I'm Dylan Heisen, and today I'm joined by Allie Martin. Hello. And Delaney Stowell. Hey, y'all. Join us in rewatching or watching for the first time all the Studio Ghibli movies now that they're available for streaming for the first time ever on HBO Max in the U.S. and Netflix and most of the rest of the world. We'll have new podcasts every Wednesday as we go through the whole Ghibli catalog chronologically and find out everything about us at OverlyAnimated.com. Um, I'm a Ghibli expert. Be joined by my co-host with a variety of Ghibli experience. Today is The Secret World of Arietti. Um, full spoilers for this movie and only minor spoilers for the rest of the Ghibli catalog. Uh, we'll be discussing both the sub and the dub. Some, some things to talk about with the dub for this one. Um, so, uh, watch whatever you prefer. Any, anything is fine for this. Um, the secret world of Arietti, uh, also known as Arietti the Borrower in Japan. I think secret world is the, North American title and also just mm. known as Arietti, I feel like is the more common name. Um, but we are in 2010. Uh, so g- g- approaching even more the recent now, this film is directed by Hiromasa Yonabayashi, uh, in his directorial debut. He was a animator on in Studio Ghibli since Mononoke. Um, and this will be the first of two movies he directs for. Studio Ghibli before he goes on to found his own company when Studio Ghibli kind of dissolves and then reforms uh, towards the end of uh, its run. And he's directed uh, Mary, uh, the, which is another great movie at that company. Um, so uh, Yonabayashi, an interesting figure in Ghibli as he's uh, one of the only kind of quote Miyazaki Takata successors that they try to put forth who kind of sticks like he's actually like uh, pretty quickly a great director. Um, and directs, uh, you know, well, we'll discuss whether we think this is a great film, but two, uh, two well-received uh, films at Studio Ghibli. Um, this is based on the 1952 novel The Borrowers by Mary Norton. Um, I didn't remember this about this movie, but the screenplay is by Hayao Miyazaki, um, along with Keiko Niwa, who I had not even discovered as a figure at Ghibli until this movie. She uh, co-writes many of the more recent Ghibli movies, including this one. Some person online uh, uh, suggests that she's the person who wrote Ocean Waves, which I have not uh, found a source for. But, um, you know, a significant uh, writing influence at at Studio Ghibli, at the very least in these later years. Um, Arietti was successful critically and financially around the world. um, And should be noted, there are two dubs of this movie. Very confusing. There's a British dub (laughs) and an American dub. Um, Nice. British, well, both know. both have good casts, honestly. Um, the U.S. dub, which is the version you'll find on streaming platforms, I believe, um, it uh, has uh, different names for some of the characters. So if you only watch the U.S. dub, show is Sean. Um, oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Aunt Sadako is Jessica. <laughs> Gosh, darn it. This one isn't oh. as bad. Haru is Hara, and uh, which is oh, still annoying. That's, that's not even. That's, so sorry. Why? I guess uh, female names aren't allowed to end in ooh; they have to end in ah. Is that the logic? Um, yeah. So <laughs> that's Sean if you hear, is the worst. If you hear ever. us referring to show and you watch the dub, no, that's Sean. Jessica so. is way worse than Sean. <laughs> she, no, that no, is I, I, Jessica's no, very Sean funny. Sean gets me. It's worse. <laughs> Just, <laughs> I'm sorry. What's the original character's name? Sad- Sadako. <laughs> Jessica. Yeah. That's what? that's a thing. Okay. So just wanted to clear that up in case you only watch Ow. the American dub and or maybe it's, I don't think we're gonna talk too much about it on Sadako, but show we're gonna talk a lot about. So that's uh Sean. Um okay, so that's everything about uh Secret Worlds of Arietti. Um let's tell let's go through our history with this movie and what did you think of it, Allie? Very stuck on Jessica because you have a name like Arietti and you don't have to change that. But Sadako, <laughs> it's hard has to, to change that one is like the title. I feel like they can't change it. Yeah, I mean, well, they totally could, and then it would be terrible. Sarah, the borrower. <laughs> <laughs> also, Arietti Ariad- is like British, rich. I just, I'm just pronouncing it Japanese because of the movie. But yeah, that's fair. Um, I don't remember. I feel like I probably watched this when I was in Japan, so definitely not 2010. Um, rewatched it a couple days ago. I wanted to like it more than I did originally and I expected to but I wound up hating it more <laughs> not hating but like it's not my favorite I'd say it's like bottom five of out of the ones I've seen 
Um, but I will say the animation and the Foley are like top notch, like never been done before. Brilliant, amazing, stunning, you know, Lady Gaga meme. Um, I'm it's glad good. I hadn't heard the dub, like co- not controversy, the like dub changes before this. Like, you know, I try to stay away from dubs and like this is a perfect example of why. First of all, the name changes. Second of all, having two. I feel like it would have been fine to like just have a UK one because this takes place in England, I assume. Uh, like, why else? Uh, yeah, would would be two? <laughs> uh, I, I, it's English property. Yeah, the, the movie I do think takes place in Japan, which wasn't obvious to me watching it. But there's like sliding doors, you know, j- features of a Japanese yeah. house. But originally, it, you know, the, in the book, it does take place in a British house. Okay, that makes sense. It's still weird. Um, I, we're gonna get into the characters, but they're not my favorite. I kind of hate all of them. <laughs> it's a bad, just bad takes. I for mean, me. I, I accept all that except Ariety. So she's fine. Just, she's hashtag fine. Okay, well, I mean, but so you're taking your bottom five Ghibli. Like, uh, it's not like it's a little hard to tell because you, you could love this movie and it could be bottom five Ghibli. You could hate it; it could be bottom five. Like, right? That's like, true. Could, There's like, like it's a, little it's hard a really to differentiate. The list is hard, so I'll say bottom three. <laughs> if that makes it more shrug. Okay. Guess how much uh, I here, like let it. me give you more fodder for hating the uh, English dub. So they <laughs> they they pulled a Spirited Away dub. There's an additional line at the end of the. Uh, American, I should say, the American dub where uh, Sho gives additional narration about how he like lived through his surgery and he heard uh, the oh, he heard that there there's borrowers like uh, down the street or something. So oh, just more of a more on. of a ha- more of a happy ending. They had to throw one line in there at the end. Why? Yeah. Let's move on. I yeah. wanted to know. Yeah, I mean, it's nice if that if that's what happened, but it's not what happened. <laughs> it's not what happened. I, I obviously I watched. The- I watched the sub, but Good. I, I was like, did he live? <laughs> yeah. I mean, know. I, you know, I was feeling that too, but I personally like when things are left to interpretation. So you're like left to fester with it for however long your well, mind matter, uses. Well, it doesn't matter because he, like, Arietta gave him the will to live. So that was like, oh, yeah. yeah. I was did- like, that's good enough. Why? Oh, yeah, that was God. fine. It didn't seem like Mr. Sean's chances were very good heading into the I'm so movie, shut so. up. Uh, I was very afraid when I saw this, like, that you in the notes that there's an added line at the end, I thought it was going to be like a stupid love confession. I was very afraid. Um, eh, that would have, I think that would have been better than no. to, to taking away the, uh, <laughs> I this, was like, this. no, I mean, no. yeah. And it's adding, I'm against I'm adding dumb. any line to the end, but that, this is, this is, I think a little worse than the spectral away one, but, um, it's way worse. Delaney, what's, uh, your history and what did you think of this movie? So I've always been aware of Arietti and I wasn't sure if it's, so I was like kind of going into this film. I was like, I've maybe seen it before. Cause again, I'm very aware of the, the borrowers. And then I was like, when, like when the credits open, I was like, have I read the book? And then, so I'm watching the movie and I have not seen this movie before. And um, like, I'm thinking like, like from my childhood. So I'm not sure if it's because I've read the book. I have a very vivid imagination. So I could be remembering like the scenes in my head from like reading the book or there's probably like, a British movie or a cartoon like I've seen or like I'm aware like I knew what was going I I, I knew going in what it was about um but I haven't I have not seen this movie but I I know about the borrowers and I've I've always been aware because I I've either seen the cartoon or something or I read the book I'm not sure which it is and so um I loved this movie I was on the edge of my seat um I was live texting Dylan while watching it <laughs> You had a strong reaction to some of the events <laughs> I did, the I was like oh my god and then uh like when my wife has been cleaning all day and when she came downstairs <laughs> she I was like sitting on the edge of the couch and she and I, I was thought like you guys yelling. are going to watch together No she, she I mean she, I I thought we were but it ended up I had to watch and she had to clean so um also she she only gets interested like halfway through the movie and then i have to explain to her everything that's happened so it's fine um she doesn't really like sitting and watching movies they have to like capture her first but uh so i'm like on the edge of the the couch i'm like yelling she keeps being like are you okay and i'm like no i'm not okay and i'm like telling her everything that's happened Uh, i really enjoyed this movie um we'll talk about it more but um other than just the story, the music in this movie is incredible. Like, I mean, incredible. And like what Ali was saying about the fo- the Foley, um, like, everything in this movie is so loud and it's incredible. Like, I mean, it's amazing, like, the effects of not just the animation, but the sound of everything yeah. in the movie they've done. It's an- astonishing. And I, I mean, it was incredible. Like, and while I was watching it, all I could think was, like, I can't think 
of another like a movie period ever that's done anything like this like where i felt so immersed in this you know perspective of being a borrower it's amazing like it just the muse especially you know obviously it's really cool watching them climb around in the walls and all the neat little tricks they have for getting around but for me it was just all of the sounds you could hear outside were just incredible yeah. and the sounds of uh, like uh the scene that really stuck out to me was and there's several but when they first go into the kitchen and you can hear all of the sounds of everything they look at. We look at the fridge, we look at the sink and it's just amazing. Like I can't overstate enough how amazing the music is. It And like, it's not just, and it's on the Foley, but then also like there's all these scenes and just the music is wonderful and suspenseful and tense and then just so loud. It's incredible. Like it's, I honestly was just blown away. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I'm glad uh, you liked it, Delaney. I had a, I, so I, yeah, I mean, I watched this when it first came out and I really liked it. Um, and I rewatched it now. I was very excited to get that Yeti and I loved it. I love this movie. Um, I think that, not that this is saying that much, but from, you know, we haven't gotten to all the movies yet, but I, some of the ones we coming up, I have seen more recently, but, um, Probably, I think this is the best non Miyazaki, non Takahata, non Whisper of the Heart uh, studio yeah, Ghibli that's movie. Definitely um, true. So there's, you know, I mean, there's there's some other contenders. I mean, we've talked about uh, a few already. I think this is a step above the two we have already gotten to plus Ocean Waves. Um, and the, but there's some there's some good ones coming up too. But uh, I feel like this is a uh, just the, one of the most gorgeous movies I've I've. Seen. I mean, I've said this like at least five times on the series, uh, probably like every podcast. But this movie is. Uh, so incredibly gorgeous, both with the animation and the sound. And the, the, yeah, I, I love the soundtrack. I was just listening to the whole soundtrack today. I've been listening to a few of the songs over and over. Um, this is the most distinctive music, obviously, in the Studio Ghibli catalog. Uh, but uh, I also think it's just really great. I do think this is a beloved soundtrack by a lot of people. Probably the most notable non uh non hisaishi soundtrack in for studio ghibli mm-hmm. um and uh but you know i mean it's it's incredibly hard to compare this to a hisaishi soundtrack very different musical styles but i think it's up there with uh with some of his works um i i lo- i love how enchanting this movie is i love the yes. dom- domestic moments of this movie the beginning is just so magical and incredible both from the first scene of her outside coming in to her first borrowing i love that scene the first borrowing is so good it's probably 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 the best scene of the movie. I feel like yeah. her getting ready into the borrowing. Um, there's and like, that's where she finds her needle thing. Yeah, her sword. Needle, yeah, it's a pen. Sword. She's a regular Arya, right? Uh, yeah, she yeah, is a regular Arya. Oh her, god, the little, little needle pin thing. Yeah. Um, the <laughs> I, I I think the yeah the, the best parts of the first half, the quieter parts, and then the very end. I think is like a really nice quiet ending. I love the ending. Um, yeah. I like, but I'm not super in love with everything involving Haru. Um, I don't have, I don't think I had quite the same reaction to Delaney. I mean, it's very suspenseful, so but it's very suspenseful. I just, I feel like that's not like why I'm here for Haru to like discover the borrowers. It's like, it's nice that there's a plot and stuff, but um, I think it was just slightly less engaging than just the yeah. quiet, uh, like uh, just magical moments. Um, but there are like magical moments during the plot, especially when Arieti is like on show's shoulder and they're like working together. I think that's really wonderful. Um, also, there's like a scene of show ex- telling Arietti that her species is doomed and so um, and he's smiling the whole time he's I, my, my, the whole movie I'm like why are you so weird show like, he's weird I don't like him I he's guess because you're like a dying kid who's inside I don't care if he's sick that doesn't give you the right to be creepy no, no, no. he just he just okay I'm not saying it's because he's sick I mean this is why he, it's because he's sick but he doesn't have any friends and all he yeah. does is read he's messed <laughs> up it's fine that's true he's, he's yeah he's a no social experience but um yeah, not the biggest show fan. Although there's good like, parts with show, I love the scene of have social experience with little people. So <laughs> is it Do different? I mean, Does I don't he get a pass? So. Um, they're literally tiny humans. It's fine. Um, <laughs> tiny yeah. human beings. Human beings. Human beings. I, I found that a very uh, 
really quirky and fun, the human beings. I know it's, yeah. it is from the books. Yeah, by the way, Borrowers, I've never seen anything else from the Borrowers, but uh, I am I feel like this is the most famous thing they've adapted. Like, I'm aware of the Borrowers before I'd this. I'd literally never heard of it before this. See, movie. now I'm like, what did I watch? Did I just read the book? Like, what it's, was it's it? It's possible it's just part of the cultural osmosis. Like, I feel like I'm just kind of, like, generally aware. I know of... I've seen something. I just don't know what it was. The only <laughs> like... thing I could, like, akin this to were, like, the Tinkerbell movies, where they, like, try oh, to capture them and prove that they're real. It's... I guess that's what the plot of this, yeah. I, I, no, know I, knew, a... I knew going into the movie that they were tiny people who borrow things. I knew all of that. That's, I was, that's I... all you really need to know for this movie. <laughs> I fully knew what was going on. Yeah, that's the plot of the movie. Uh, yeah, and I know Tales from Mercy also very famous, so that's a caveat, my previous statement. Um, but uh, the, yeah, the, the, the nature, oh yeah, also the, in addition, the, like there's a gorgeous uh, animation for the domestic shots inside the house and also the nature outside, like both that's... of them. And I found that very impressive that there's two oh, the garden is completely gorgeous. different. And like of... all the little bugs, the way they do them and... The, all the bugs so are so cute. I'm like, not a so bugs cute. person, but they make them uh, really cute. Yeah. Well, it's uh, like, the like especially a lot of the scenes of show like in the yard like those are beautiful scenes yes. yeah yeah oh and by the way about show like it's it's not shows this isn't this terrible character i think the scene of uh arietti and show talking through the window when he hasn't seen her yet i think that's a magical scene um, that's a so way better I, scene i'm gonna be the number one show stan now am i okay <laughs> i don't think there's with... a lot of competition for that <laughs> i'm the show stan i love him now was the extin- extinction scene great no i was like shut up and then but then he 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 apologized at the end, and I was like, okay, this is slightly better. Yeah. I, just, I just want to talk about what they were going for there. I'm just not sure. So why, yeah, that, me that's going to be a topic of discussion. I think, I mean, I feel like they were literally just trying to impress upon us the dire situation they were in. <laughs> like, but like, why it. was he smiling throughout that whole thing? He's just a little that's weirdo. He's, he's he's, just yeah, a... he's just a little weirdo. Like, <laughs> look, he has to go spend like a week with his with his like great aunt and like the creepy her weird person. yeah housekeeper and I then his her. only friend is this mean cat <laughs> like listen i'd be fine with that i would though. prefer if my only friend oh. no offense to you guys was a mean cat <laughs> i'm my, my best friend is my cat figgy and she is a mean cat yeah, I, was gonna, I was gonna say <laughs> you've, you've described like, mean you mean cat. my cat yeah um i feel like show uh ali you tell me if you agree with this guy i feel like show is a very anime type character archetype for ghibli like if he's like a sick uh like kind of like yeah. a dollish boy who uh is weird i feel like that's like a thing you'd see in an anime that's the, that's my problem with a lot of like not like shoujo but i guess slice of life anime movie or whatever it's like either there's a dead mom or it's a sick child or a sick mom a lot of sick but, like, characters in anime. yeah um, yeah yeah so i don't know uh, but He's, i think to me he was just very not sympathetic i didn't i feel bad that he's sick but like i don't care about him enough as a character like sure your dad works all the time and your mom also works all the time who cares (laughs) yeah that was weird it's like oh they both they're divorced though too and yeah there's a lot of but um yeah i don't don't care that much about you i love arietti herself like she's one of my favorites i'm shocked Um, i'm shocked (laughs) shocking i love this type but this i don't know the scene of her getting in uh uh, putting on her red dress like and the hair clip i was like oh my god so red iconic like, oh okay no this, when this she outfit her is hair, the most iconic i'm like wow like, I'm like, it's is so it more good. iconic than kiki's dress those that's i mean that you know that don't compare it to kiki but you uh, just said it's the most iconic the most iconic is a uh, hyperbole but the the uh it's a very <laughs> it's a i was like wow that's iconic you it know is. we're talking relative to the not miyazaki not talking, it's iconic but. because of her hair pin honestly that's the best the hair clip. The, the, no when she puts her hair up i'm like yes the red dress the weird the hair clip the the pin uh sword like, like what an outfit um, it's pretty great but i also have no sympathy for her either because she literally ruins everything for her parents she I mean, she's the family I, also, okay, I, don't like that. I don't think they give enough time to like i would have appreciated if she had had more time to explain to her parents that yeah. like show was not bad right i think we we see it from her perspective like she knows show is and is probably not that and bad. i'm like can you just but, be like, like show your parents the note that's it can you just show them the yeah, note? it's like yeah. my biggest complaint because the dad even before all this happened was like you can tell if humans are bad or not like you could tell from yeah. instinct yeah, and he doesn't really give her the chance that. to explain yeah, yeah that's, that's like a good what's point. your problem man yeah, I think you. I think you generally probably understand where Arietti's coming from, wanting to yeah, younger, wanting to give uh, like people like a chance and expand her horizons. And the dad is like more jaded and like knows this is what works for surviving. And so, I, I mean, I, I think mean, the worst character that. is the mom. No, no the worst like character is Haru. She's so <laughs> okay, okay, we're not talking about. She doesn't count. Um, we'll talk about her. I think Haru is <laughs> a, a very people. funny villain for this movie. Like, uh, she's yeah. just so annoying. I want to slap her. 
that's fair, I guess. That's, uh, I mean, I guess that speaks to, to how well she's yeah, written. To, to, so. finish, to cl- close out the thought, yeah, love Aria, to close out thoughts. I think this movie, the real, like, here's the summary, I feel like, of why this is uh, a great movie. I think this is the non-Miyazaki, non-Daka, uh, non-Whistler movie that gets closest to the Miyazaki magic, to the Ghibli mm-hmm. magic. Like, I feel like this movie taps into and this is probably by why this director i feel like is the one who ends up standing out and succeeding like i feel like he is able to tap into this studio ghibli magic that is so hard for anyone uh that's not miyazaki or takata to replicate um i feel like he, this is this movie to, feel, to me feels like a combination of the miyazaki and takata each of their styles and their respective magics it has the dom- domesticity and the realness of a takahata movie uh, and it kind of also has the magic of a Miyazaki movie because it still has the fantasy elements of kind of the small perspective. It feels very like fantastic and just the existence of these small people, but it's a very real grounded movie like a Takata film. So I, I, I like how it um, captures elements of both types of films that we've been seeing throughout the series. Um, and yeah, I mean, what, what's the, what topic I think are we uh, honing in on here? But uh, I, I, I want to talk about the perspective. Yeah. I feel like Delaney mentioned this. This is definitely like one of the uh, big standouts of, of uh, this movie is you see the, uh, a normal house, but from the perspective of tiny people and you see like everything being huge, like it, it's most notable in the uh, Ariete's first borrowing scene. Um, but uh, it's, it's just, um, um, very like fantastical and uh really i think uh the one of the elements of the movie that stands out the most is uh the perspective i think that they're able to accomplish here i mean that's the magic of this movie and what you're talking about with um like the magic of miyazaki like it's i mean that like it really like this to me this still feels very much like that ghibli magic because of I mean with the perspective in the music it really like you're like I am a borrower yeah. and especially like something that really it's what I really enjoyed too was which it's really funny because like at the end of the movie show like winces but you know so the room it's quiet we still have all the really loud noises but like the little like clink of their um their grappling hooks and like everything like that because you know there's all these like, ridiculously loud sounds and then there's the sounds that are loud to them because they're so small and it's just astonishing like i really like i was just blown away the, the whole movie and every time we're in their house and then re- and of course when it's revealed that they're in the closet and they, they have like their little hatch and that's another like thing that's just insane because we've seen several times in the film at that point watching them you know, like Arietti is, you know, at, at that the basement gate. Well, I guess it's more like a crawl space. Like she's in the, the crawl space, and that's where Sho leaves her, her his presence in the notes. And we see her, you know, uh, oh, like jumping over the the brick, and then also they follow the brick when they go for the first borrowing. And then to and then like especially, I think the thing that really got me was the bottle. Was mm. like you see it in their kitchen the whole movie, and then when he like breaks their house that's another thing that was like yeah I'm... not a point in show's favor he's like did you like the kitchen and it's like you just broke my house yeah but how did um, you even find their house i hate well, it well now it's interesting too that like there's so purposefully like a door there that clearly like the people who've lived in this house have known about the borrowers the whole time yeah and also and i think that's the other thing that's so much like fun about this movie and also also heartbreaking is that um shows i guess his grandfather great grandfather he he loved the borrowers and he made the dollhouse for them as a present yeah and and yet they're still so uh like and they're so so scared of it Mm -hmm. and it's very it's very and then of course the dollhouse becomes this like very important part of show interacting and then haru figuring it out and it's just i love it and well but back to the bottle is that you keep seeing it in the house and then he destroys the house and you realize like you start to realize like it's messed up. And, but then I love it when after he cleans it all up and they go and Haru's like, look, look, look. And it's just the broken bottle. Like, I just love it. Like all of that, they do a really good job of like flipping the perspectives, especially towards the end of the movie where we're flipping back and forth constantly. Yeah. 
I, I agree with all that. Yeah, it's a good point that you finally see where their house is located, and it's just this little tiny, uh, like, hole um, in the closet. And it feels so big. Like, they live in, like, you know, yeah. they seem to live in, like, a, like, they do a good job of being, like, here's the kitchen. Here's Ariadne's be- bedroom. Here's the dad's little workshop. Mm. Yeah, and it's like all that's in this tiny little box yeah. at the end. Yeah. yeah pers- this movie is probably one of the most notable uses of perspective in yeah, recent definitely. memory. Um, yeah, it's, it's, and and it's, and it's all just so like magically presented every like household items. And, um, when you see it through, uh, Arietti's perspective and then, you know, you see, we see the house kind of normally and it's still kind of this enchanting, uh, like it it is kind of like a half Japanese, half British house. Um, and, uh, it also, yeah, the dollhouse too is very magical. Um, let's uh, bring in some quotes, um, about the perspective from Hayao Miyazaki's world picture by Danny Cavallaro. Um, she says, most salient aspect of Secret World of Ariete is the ability, it is its ability to both capture and represent the world from the perspective of diminutive creatures known as borrowers. Yona Bayashi and his collaborators deserve credit for accomplishing this challenging cinematic feat. Um, yeah, so I, I think uh, on board with what we're saying with how it's, um, one of the, the most notable aspects of the movie. And, uh, I think an interesting, uh, take that Kavairo has in this this section is the influence of Miyazaki who does contribute to the screenplay of this movie um so here's kind of some background on Miyazaki and perspective she says indeed Miyazaki has a tendency to wonder what the world might look like from the point of view of non-human beings significantly smaller than humans from an early from an early age this in- instinctive propensity is borne out by the following reflection from Miyazaki when I look down at a clear stream or pond I marvel at leeches wriggling about or transparent little shrimp drifting like spaceships and I've always wondered what the world looks like to these tiny creatures air bubbles must seem far more elastic to them than they do to us and in their environment, things must feel almost as weightless as they do in outer space. Uh, Miyazaki harbors a natural proclivity to wonder about the world's appearance from a perspective of diminutive entities, a, co- a corollary of both his reverence for nature and all its forms, and of his exhaust- inexhaustible curiosity. This is bound to have filtered into the script of Yona Bayashi's directorial debut. Um, an interesting background of a quote from Miyazaki, and I agree that this makes sense with uh, his reverence to nature and yeah, his, his curiosity, which um, which makes its way into his magic. Um, I never really considered with Ariete the kind of Miyazaki background influence on this movie, and uh, as as background, I guess um, he he had wanted to adapt this movie at Ghibli for many years, and they finally got around to it. Um, this well, this like book, and they got around to it now. Yeah. Well, it's like there's very much, I mean, what they were saying about, well, I mean, we talk about the environmentalism and and the interactions with, between human and magic and humans and nature. And this is still very much plays into that. This, you know, the humans, they're a great impact on the, the borrowers, like the borrowers, you know, it's also kind of like the conflict with the borrowers and Haru, like Haru is like they're thieves. And it's like the borrowers like take literally so little, like. They're so small. One, like, one sugar cube is a big, uh, a big. That's a lot. Steal for them, yeah. Yeah, and I mean everything they own is so like it's so small. They make do with like um, like another scene that really stands out is when Arietti's mashing up the cookies to make mm. flour or I guess um, breadcrumbs, whatever they're going to use it for, and and also everything they own, like you know, they just carry them around in these little sacks, like. It's astonishing. And then, you know, but also very, and it, kind of what we were talking about, like, you know, reasons not to like show is these very small things show does has a really big impact on the borrower's lives. And so it's very much this, you know, we take what we can, we, you know, try to survive, but they're very small people trying to, you know, make their way through this very dangerous world and they don't, and they don't really impact where they live. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I guess that's the concept of the borrowers is they're they're taking very little. Um, but then also the, the humans were, who are, you know, they're fascinated with them, but then there's also Haru who just wants, you know, to capture them, to hurt them, whatever. Yeah, yeah, we can go Because again, the it. humans interacting with magic and not understanding or also, you know, being weird and terrible as humans are. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I think uh, it's not... Uh surprising to see uh, the perspective of Haru. Um, I feel like it's even, it's more surprising to see that the rest of the family has respected them for a long time. Right. I feel like that's pretty striking. Like, why did you hire this woman if she doesn't respect you know, that's your moral I, values? Well, that's what I really liked was when the, the aunt was talking about, uh, Sadako yeah. was talking about, 
you know, the dollhouse and everything. And then especially with the intro to the film and show talks about, he's like, my mom used to say that she, you know, she's seen the little people who live in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I want a related quote from Danny Cavallaro on, uh, the visual approach of the screenplay, since we're talking about Miyazaki's influence, just want to note this. Um, she says, Secret of Arietti bears witness to Miyazaki's influence in its handling of details and related approach to cinematography. Yonabayashi has em- emphasized the screenplay's very visual quality, which he views as a cor- corollary of Miyazaki's distinctive sensibility, played a pivotal role in the construction of the film's, film's mise-en-sense, which is like the sta- stage design, which, by the way, I saw this term, mise-en-sense, twice in, in uh, discussion about this movie which i guess makes sense because it's all about like um furniture arranged in in like the houses right. and like that's such a huge uh. part of the movie um but i thought i found that was interesting never really seen the term much <laughs> before and it's like a big part of this movie uh the script's intrinsic visuality made it possible for the director and his colleagues to imagine the atmosphere suitable for specific scenes on the basis of just a handful of details and impart the action with an overall sense of coherence and consistency at the same time the script enabled the production team to focus on the borrower's perception of their environment but also portray the interiors and exteriors in a manner which which a full-size human viewer could deem realistic. Several key moments in Secret of Arietti owe their dramatic effectiveness to the sheer fact that the screenplay was itself jam-packed with evocative visual cues. So some background on Miyazaki's screenplay, the visualness of it, which I think is interesting because, yeah, this is a type of movie that doesn't have a lot of narrative happening. No. Um, so or it's dialogue. Like, or yeah, dialogue. Yeah, I, I not. I feel like there's not a lot, uh, and it, it takes a little while to hear the first uh, dialogue in the in the movie, maybe, um, or at least there's very little in the beginning. Um, so it's like you know, what is what does a screenplay like this consist of? Um, so I think that's that's pretty interesting. So Miyazaki emphasizing the visual. I feel like you know that's how he approaches his movies. Is he doesn't even start with the screenplay for his own. He has a, a, a vision board and uh, fills it with images, and uh, so it makes sense. He's a very visual approach to the storytelling here. Um, I guess, I guess speaking of the, uh, not as much of a narrative, wanted to read this, uh, quote on the overall assessment of the movie by Colin O'Dell and Michelle LeBlanc, as I've been quoting their book, Studio Ghibli, the films of Hayao Miyazaki and Isao Takada. They say the direction is solid and Arietti is an easy film to watch. It has linear narrative that is well constructive with high quality animation and exemplary character design. While Arietti doesn't have the more extreme fantastical aspects of Miyazaki's works or the wonderful experimental edge of Takada's films, it retains a charming, if undemand, undemanding, uh, fantasy. Um, so uh, I was a little surprised they weren't a higher on this movie, but this, you know, it's a positive assessment, but I guess Ali, as you were someone that wasn't higher as well, what do you think of their assessment of this maybe as an undemanding movie? Do you think it's like linear, simple narrative hurts it? Uh, well, for me, I, I wouldn't say it hurts it, but for me personally, it's not something I'm super into just because I've watched a lot of linear narrative anime t- television and I'm like kind of over it at this stage in my life. But I think it's, it's a really fair assessment. And because it, because it's like, so like such, I guess a simplistic narrative, it lets you focus on all the other stuff. Like you guys were saying perspective, obviously is like the best aspect of the movie, I think, um, and, uh, you know, the animation and everything, but it's hard to ignore in any movie. Um, I'm demanding. I don't know. It <laughs> demands you to like kind of throw a lot of like just expectations of people out the window. Cause like when you're talking about the borrowers or when rather Sean's Sean, oh my God, show his family. <laughs> Can you just refer to him as Sean. Oh, man. Revoke my weeb card. <laughs> when he <laughs> refers to the borrowers and like his family knowing about them, I'm like, you guys are treating this like it's too normal. But it is fantasy, even though it's like, what, what did they describe it as? Like a. It's at the top of the outline. <laughs> I, I described it as a domestic fantasy. That's my Yes, my which assessment. is very fair. That's like the perfect description. And for me, I'm not a huge fan of it unless like the plot really goes somewhere. And for this, it didn't feel like it went anywhere or it felt like it went to a sad place, which wasn't bad, but it wasn't my favorite personally. But listening to you guys talk about it, like as this happens with every podcast I'm on with Ghibli movies, I'm enjoying it more that I get like after hearing your guys' takes. That's good. Uh, it's interesting because I, uh, I feel like the, uh, I would have liked less, uh, like narrative at the end. Like, I feel like the parts yeah, that worked the, the most is, for me I are. I would have preferred less, but also, like, really, that's where we went. Like, after all that, you guys gotta leave and everything yeah, sucks. Yeah. And no, I, I, like, I like them leaving <laughs> and the show die. I mean, I think that's. I fun. like it too, but it just feels like it was all this buildup 
for nothing, which it, again, for me, it depends. I really like that a lot of the time, but here I was like, this is boring. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's fair. I think you could maybe describe this as a, a more of a children's movie if you want to. Um, I guess so. And, it was interesting uh, that that quote was like full sized humans can appreciate it. I was like, I think kids can appreciate it too. And they're not full size. <laughs> I think I think yeah I think they're referring to not borrower size <laughs> compared to borrowers children would be full sized, um, but yeah just the the like uh, maybe something looks completely different if you're tiny but um, it needs yeah. to also make I mean, sense. There's for also us negative the nuances movie. that come with that that I'm not going to get into. Yeah, a lot of uh, descriptions of little people, which uh, you know, um, yeah, uh, but it, referring to like you know in this in this case uh, like an, yeah. inch, an inch tall person, um, right. Two inch tall. I don't know. Um, but there's uh, definitely like been shows like this that I've seen where there's little people and there's like like mini like one inch the, the, size the people. elves in uh, Hilda, you know, something like that. Oh, hello, Jesus. That's one. Yeah. I'm thinking of like from my childhood, though. There was definitely shows like this that I didn't enjoy watching because I was like, this is boring. They're like, I mean, it, uh, not boring. I don't know. And I will say, I will say the the fantasy aspect of this movie is it's is pretty. You're talking about how the family is a very accepting. I think it's a pretty simple fantasy. It's like okay, there's little people, yeah. but there's nothing. No, you know, they're just the same thing as yeah. As they don't big fly. Humans. They don't change yeah. color. Well, there's just this. I think it. Well, and again, I'm I, there. I I don't know if I watch something. If it's the book, <laughs> I like. It's very. I part of the movie was shocking to me because of the family knew about the borrowers, and then also the. Um, the plot of you know where Haru's trying to kill them because I was like, what are we doing? Because I just thought it was going to be hiding from show and you just you know because again I'm watching the movie and I can follow a linear narrative and I was trying to figure out what's going on and and you know we get like a, you know more into the movie and I'm like Haru's going to try and kill them which is not what I thought was going to happen when yeah. this movie started. I thought she was going to like try and sell them for money and then when she talked about well, killing them, I was like, her, to her credit, she says she wants the trapping service. Yeah, she wants to trap the, them. Yeah, but like that was the yeah. thing was like that's not where I anticipated this movie being at all. Like I thought it was going to be more like Pomio esque in which you know we're just trying to befriend the human and then I was like this went off the rails really fast. Yeah, and I think that's but I will fun. say this is more um, about the history of the house, which is the fantasy. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like it's it's more that the borrowers have lived there for a long time. Like even uh, Pod talks about the families that have lived in their house, which has been in the, uh, shows family's house for so long. So it's more about this really, which I think is why it's so upsetting when they leave at the end. It's not very satisfying mm-hmm. because. You know, this house has a lot of history for the humans and the borrowers, and they're intertwined because they've lived in this house. And the humans have noticed the borrowers, and it's nope. <laughs> they're just like we have to leave. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, it's s- sad, sad at the end, so, um, considering we do learn the whole history and the dollhouse. I mean, the dollhouse. It's like oh, you th- I feel like you watch this movie and you think they're going to end up living in the dollhouse, and yeah. it's going to be wonderful. Um, yeah, and they don't, and it's, it's really- pretty tragic. No, that's like I was to say. This movie is really tragic for how adorable mm. it is, and the very kind of innocuous things that occur. But then it's it's very sad, and it all, and that's just, and this is not even without talking about the fact that um, the whole movie you're afraid Cho's going to die because he has a bad heart. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Every definitely. time that boy ran, I was like, "What are you doing? Stop that!" <laughs> Seriously, I literally yeah, was like screaming at Dylan. I was like, "Your heart." Is a thing. He's he's uh he just needs to save Arietti's mom. You I mean, adorable, but I was like, this child is not about to pass out dead. I think walking like, fast is also hard. I feel speed like walking. Speed it walk, is hard. Yeah. I think it's hard for him, yeah. Um, he can't get his heart rate up. What are you doing, child? Stop it. <laughs> yeah, let, 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 let's let's pivot to the the music. I think that's something we haven't, uh, one of the most notable subjects we haven't talked in detail about yet, and we can go back to show and then Haru. Um, so the, the score of this movie is by a French artist, uh, Cécile Corbel. Um, she's the first non-Japanese composer for, and, and only for any Ghibli movie. Um, she, this, this soundtrack has very varied styles, including Celtic, uh, uh style songs, um, and, and many others around the world. Um, there's, there's a lot of lyric songs in English in the movie, which is striking for a Ghibli film. If you're only watching the subs of, of all these movies, there's just songs in English and it's not a dub thing. It's like, this is the... This is the, the 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 soundtrack for the movie. Um, so, like, the, apparently, the story behind this is she like just sent a CD she made to 
to Ghibli and uh, they happen to listen to it. And it's like, oh, it's perfect for this movie we're making. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, but yeah, just uh, the, some notable songs from the movie The Neglected Garden is my favorite. It's the one that plays right in the beginning and then replays later in the movie, uh, one of the lyric songs in English. And then the, the big the big one from the movie is the one at the end over the credits, Arietti's song. which contains lyrics in five languages in the in the song um and uh, it's it's incredible that that's yeah Yeah. no i was like like but i was just kept watching the credits i was like yes like i was (laughs) obsessed with the song that's like Uh, one of the best parts of the movie also seeing them go downstream in the kettle yes it's gorgeous yeah i love love that ending too yeah um our i love our house below i think that plays towards yeah towards the beginning um as as well uh really just and there's instrumental versions of all these songs too there's even more songs with lyrics on them um just uh, i think this is i don't know what this movie looks like without this type of music behind it yeah well they really they also just play they also play with perspective with not just the foley but with the music like because you know in a lot of scenes where we we pan out the music gets really loud and a lot and it's also interesting with this movie i mean of course i have no idea how they actually like did it but you know, mate, I mean, it almost feels like the music is playing over the dialogue a lot of the time, which is, you know, not normal. <laughs> like, that's not how... Like songs with lyrics playing over... over yeah, dialogue. over yeah. him talking. And it's incredible. And it's, beca- and it's and again, playing that with that perspective that, like, they're not very loud. They're very quiet. Everything is so small. And the music in a lot of... Pl- <laughs> okay, as soon as I started the movie... I turned it up, you know, like how, how much, and I, my wife immediately is like, it's too, like, she's upstairs and she's like, it's too loud. Turn it down. <laughs> like, I was going to say, it's a movie that if you can't watch in like IMAX, you should wear, you should have headphones because like yes. the sound bounces everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the, the, the most distinctive style of music for a, a Ghibli movie. And uh, so I think so vital to the, well, I think for the feel movie. of this movie. I mean, honestly, yeah. I don't know if I could think of a movie that has a more distinctive like soundtrack i feel like than this movie avatar get, tried blue people avatar tried and they, they just did, failed well, and again it's that well it's again that perspective like this it just really adds to like i mean obviously the animation is beautiful the perspectives they do but then i mean honestly for me the music really makes it like everything is so loud and all like and everything is so big musically it's incredible it's and very, especially, yeah it is very big musically i agree and a that. lot of the scenes in the movie like i mean there is dialogue they obviously talk throughout the movie but there are a lot of scenes where it's just Arietti running around and she's not talking and it's just this these incredible music moments as she's running around the garden or she's climb like when she climbs up to show's bedroom like incredible there's no sound like there's no dialogue it's just music I need to talk about Spiller because his theme is my favorite oh, and he yeah. also doesn't get enough credit I love that boy he's the best Sp- character Spiller, Spiller's theme is uh, distinctive from the rest of the song as well in its style yeah. I noticed that when I was listening also this is another on point of course Ali loves Spiller listen he's an archer I stand no choice also he's like lives off the land and he's like screw humans I can borrow my own like what kind of leg ca- not what does he catch does it's he, like I mean, a, okay obviously he gets crickets but i'm like that's what it is thank you yeah it's, it's you mean the animal that he rides on is there something he rides on i don't remember oh no no, no. i'm just like how do you like i'm just with his tiny bow and arrow that's all i'm just yeah true him. like he could shoot down like a robin with that maybe if you have good enough aim no don't say that oh we're not talking about the most important <laughs> char- character in the movie it's the crow that bashes oh, yeah. the yeah, window thank you. That's like if that action. didn't give show a heart attack, I don't know what. Yeah, would, that's honestly. just <laughs> yeah, honestly. true. He's just <laughs> calmly grabbing Arietti while the crow shoving the crow out. Yeah. You know? Also, um, the like audio, the when he grabs her, like the fact that the audio gets really muffled. It's just yeah. so the direction. Yes, is really that's good. what I'm talking about. It's so good. It's really good. Yeah, I, I just I, the, the animation and the, everything about the sound of this movie, especially the music, but everything is, well, um, like- all, I think, unparalleled with Ghibli movies. Well, it's like all yeah. Ghibli movies obviously have great music and beautiful animation. But for me, like in the, with this movie, it's really the combination that really just like creates the magic. Yeah, I think like, so. Could, I think so. Like, it, it, watch, yeah, more than any other movie, I feel like it's, you know, uh, like you could watch um, My Neighbor Totoro with no sound and it would still be this magical experience. You could like you can still watch like Spirited Away and it's still this magical experience. But then to watch this movie 
without sound would really like i mean it would it would ruin it it wouldn't like it, it's very much this combination of the beautiful perspective and the animation with the perspective they play in with the music yeah i i think so and it, it's especially notable because um many of these miyazaki movies have large uh sections of the movie with no music in them that's yes. on purpose um and uh you know here we have a movie so the the music's so vital too i think there are some probably some scenes yes. with, with no music here um, but, uh, it definitely enhances the kind of European English kind of feeling of the movie, but also just the, uh, I don't know, the delicacy of the movie, like the, mm. the, the enchantingness it's very, of it. Yeah. It's, it's a very gentle movie despite yeah. the violence that occurs, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it's still very gentle. Like there's, it's, I mean, like you said, it's very, I mean, it's a domestic fantasy. Like it's really interesting how insular the story is. What I, what's so interesting to me with this music choice is like so many half of Miyazaki's movies are European fantasy movies. Um, and I feel like this is one of the most, uh, even though it takes place in Japan in like a Japanese house, this is one of the most evocative of like uh, Europeanness. I feel like even more so. Well, I think a, a big part of that is the dollhouse, which is like, I mean, and they're like, oh, he made it in England. Like, yeah, it's like this Baroque. <laughs> Yeah, style. It feels very house. much like the the Baron statue to me from, from yeah. Whisper, um, and, yeah. and Kara turns. But uh, yeah, and then the and the score is of course like a big component to to achieving that feeling. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's it, I think there's there's movies like the, the the Spirited Away score is you know I mean in my opinion the best ever and so uh, fitting of that movie and the the tone of it and uh, you see something like this which just, I feel like is just as fitting for what this specific movie is going for and yet so so different. Um, uh, it's it's uh, I, lo- I love how much we we've talked about it as we usually don't talk about um, the scores quite as much, but, uh, th- this is like such a listenable one to highly recommend. Um, well, I think it's hard the very indie soundtrack. with a lot of the, um, Ghibli films. Like I love all the music and everything I've seen, but it's hard to like, because everything you're seeing is so beautiful that sometimes it's hard to pay attention as much to the music until, you know, it makes itself known, but it, because the music is so loud and on purpose, you can't ignore it, which I think that's another reason why I'm so like, like really it's really impressed me and really it's impressed upon me because of you know it's a very different experience of watching versus the other Miyazaki films I've watched well not that again this isn't he wrote the screenplay but because the music is just it's such a pivotal part of the storytelling and the immersiveness of the story but you know I want like obviously my neighbor Totoro best theme song also it's amazing and the music's great but that's not what I think about when I think about my neighbor Totoro when I think about Arietti now I'm gonna be like it's the music yeah I think that's true for many people um but uh yeah it's it's uh maybe quieter scores um in in other movies or at least not as quite as ostentatious or as integrated as um as uh, into the style of movie as this one is um yeah so i it's it's I, we're speaking of spiller's theme so i don't know are there any other any other spiller comments i think his like uh understated crush on Arietti oh, is yes. like very charming yes um, it's so good and he's like not nice guy about it it's well and then he's like guy. really sweet when he like gives her the whatever i guess it's a raspberry i don't know yes he's and a he good gets, boy and then he like dances away it's so cute. i don't like how he gets judged for eating bugs that's racist <laughs> that's fair valid i really don't like it it's fair um yeah well there's so. also there's a lot of like i mean it's because it's based on a british book but um it's you know there's very much this like classism with spiller mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. i and hate it it's just it's like well ooh, represented like, i just it makes me uncomfortable yeah well i mean it's one of it's there like you can't ignore it and it's just <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I think everyone tries to be very welcoming of him. Yes, um, but their their differences are very uh, noted. There's, I think by the movie. Yeah, no, I mean, mean homilies like give him teen right now. Yeah, but the dad and Ariete are so respectful, and the mom is just freaking out in the corner. To be I'm fair, like, the mom is terrible. She's the worst character. She is in the movie. terrible. I think you're right. What I'm are we? Okay, what are we? What's the? <laughs> well, why you guys hate homily? She's okay, sweet. So okay, it's not. It's not homily's riddles. fault. They made her. Yeah, relatable. Allie. That's why I don't <laughs> yeah. like her. I hate characters I can relate she's to. The, I hated Moody. I love him now. <laughs> she's the worry, wor- worry, war, useless mom, and it's just upsetting. And she just complains all the time. 
Like, shut up. I think she's trying to be very kind all the time. I I like how, like, uh, quirky kind of she is. Um, Oh, I I mean, I like her. She's quirky, but she's just... I don't like her screaming all the time. <laughs> oh yeah, that's 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 a, that's, a, that's a negative in her box, <laughs> definitely. I think uh, Arietti rescuing her with show, and then their their, their reunion, Arietti and and oh, Amelie. So I think when that's they're hugging, scene, I was yeah. like, cry. Yeah, yeah, at a single tear. And and Pod is is uh, pretty good. Not Pod's yeah. great. Pod like might be best dad. He he's oh, competing no. with Totoro. He annoys me. Totoro oh, dad. Pod's Come great. Shut Totoro up. dad. Uh, well, he, yeah, he's the gruff dad who Shut doesn't. Uh, is that how that works? Is, yeah, <laughs> is, I think those contradict. Uh, he's, he's gruff dad, silent dad, Japanese type dad. Like um, I like those dads. I don't like that he's like you can like you know trust your instinct with people, and then he just is like screw you. Your instinct to just make well, is making us. I mean, everything goes really like there. It's definitely a bit jarring and like really fast when he's like. Like he's he's like we're not going to tell your mom because your mom's going to flip out and neither of us want that. But then he's like we have to move and it's like yeah oh like you really want yeah, some negative that, that, that does happen pretty fast. I agree. I don't uh, think there's enough of a like explanation as to why the ne- like the sugar cube freaks them out. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like uh, it's placed for them. They know they're there. It's like a trap, and uh, yeah, you know, they don't want to interact with the trap. Don't want to leave any proof. Um, it's 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 it is it is kind of tragic because yeah it's like this uh, overture by by show um more yeah more into show and show in the scene with um with Arietti talking about how she thinks they're gonna go extinct um yeah what what what's going on here um <laughs> too many totally things. can't let go is show is show being like uh just is he just socially inept is this um yeah, is this for the purpose of explaining to us about the theme of how uh, endangered the borrowers are. Um, I mean, I think it's a mixture of like explaining to us because like we that's all of our exposition is like this. But then also, I I don't know if it's kind of like him being kind of mad that they won't like accept help. Yeah, that's possible. That's um, but then also he he's just a sick little boy who has no friends. So unsure. See, I didn't really see it as like explanation to us because we've gotten the perspective from the family that they're like, there's not a lot of us left. We yeah, might be the only one. Yeah, we already got that with Spiller. Yeah. And then when Spiller comes, they're like, oh, maybe we're not. Like, maybe hopeful. So this scene, I did not like this scene at all. It's, it's weird. It's still. Yeah, I don't still like a... that he's smiling. That's the worst thing for me. <laughs> That's the he's always thing. creepily smiling. Yeah. That's Why? the show way. <laughs> Why? Yamade. day. Um, yeah, I agree. The, uh, and I, I guess. Uh, this this ties into Haru and her perspective on. Did we see the different humans' perspectives on that already? Let's read uh, this hot take by Danny <laughs> Cavallaro, um on the potential theme here. And and uh, for background, I did read a previous hot take she had. I think in the Cat Returns podcast, which we did not agree with. And I've looked up online, and there is some some criticism for this type of uh, of uh, comparison she makes sometimes. But um, I, I present it uh, as a. Uh, gateway into a discussion on what the movie I'm is afraid. trying to say. I'm afraid. So, I haven't read you this yet. You should be. Uh, be very afraid. <laughs> she says, uh, furthermore, Yonobayashi has imparted the drama with a distinctive signature by turning the Mary Norton story on which it is based into a gritty allegory of racial per- persecution. Thus, mm-hmm. while going to great lengths to depict both the natural world and domestic interiors with lyrical elegance, the sequel to a lot of variety does not demur from the underlying the gratuitous and wanton nature of the animosity leveled against a demonized species by a callous human, bigoted and unintelligent as persecutors are wont to be. The detestable Hara, aka Haru, is simply unable to perceive the borrowers as anything other than an alien race whose very existence is something of an offense against the natural order of things. Um, so this notion of uh, as allegory for racial persecution, which... Um, We've we've had some discussions and we don't necessarily like uh, instantly comparing everything to racism, but we could we could say prejudice. Um, I do yeah, think this movie is probably term. probably commenting on prejudice at least a little oh, bit with Haru. Yeah. yeah, prejudice so. is a way better term than racism, and I I hate this take because she used that word. Yeah, um, yeah. you know I think she's going for hot takes with these comparisons. That's yeah, she. Opinion. I mean, it's very uh, muddying the waters to be like racism. Like, no, that's not. But no. okay. And still it's a pretty pretty harsh color. assessment of uh, of how, yeah, are there in in this movie? Um, we as always we typically do not have in uh, in in Studio Ghibli movies, or you know, other than Japanese and uh, white. It's people. about racism. Everyone's white. No, <laughs> no. 
I guess everyone would be Japanese in this. Yeah, I was gonna say. I, I was like, I was about to correct yeah. myself. Everyone's Japanese. Yeah. Uh, no, you still can't make that <laughs> yeah, comparison. Yeah, still no. Very, very, very uh, bold takes on on Haru being like uh, so detestable and un- un- unintelligent and single callous. And uh, is like, that a hot take? I think she gives Haru a lot more credit. <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. She's not I think that. She's, I think she's a wacky old lady. I think that's yeah, how she comes across that. to us. I mean, it's it very much feels <laughs> more like no. At first, when she's like, "I need an exterminator," I'm like, "She wants to kill them," but then when she <laughs> Calls, granted, to be fair, the the time period between her talking to the delivery dude and when she calls is a long enough period of time that you're like, she's going to kill them. And then only during the phone call do we, granted, during this phone call, she locks show in his room and she's like, I just want to trap them. Again, there's a long period of time for you to build up enough hatred for Haru to, to, to the point where it doesn't matter. But like, and I'm speaking for myself, but. You know, it's she very it very much turns more into the real look. I've seen it's more of like, and you don't get enough of this because it's just so sinister up until like literally the last twenty minutes of the movie, where it turns out she's seen them, she's noticed, and now she's finally has proof, and then it's taken away. And again, you don't like, and I think that's part of like why it kind of falls apart a bit at the end is because her like it's heart is just a mess the whole movie. Yeah, I I think you maybe start to understand at the end, and I like this by the movie when she starts going like, "Oh, uh, freaking out!" Like, "Oh, the cover he covered all the tracks," and yeah. um, like and she's I, like glaring at him, and the like, like she's she's been okay. working in this house, and she feels kind of like gaslit by yeah. by everyone, like she, that she's like noticed this, and no one believes her, and so I feel like you kind of understand eventually where she's coming from, and it's it's a little sympathetic, like um that that show tra- tries to protect them by covering up all the tracks. Yeah. Sympathetic is a strong word, though. Um, like, what is her damage? Why does she? <laughs> what is her damage? I, I want to tell you my, what my who, who uh, Haru related me or uh, who who she reminded me of was in Kiki's delivery service. The they're the two old ladies who bake the pie that Kiki oh, needs no. to deliver. There's no, those the, ladies are the house, up. and the housekeeper who like pretends to ride on the broom. Who's uh, the, oh. who's with the elegant older lady? Like Haru reminded me a lot of her, like very like no. energetic. She's a similar character model. Obviously, that the lady in Kiki is like super sympathetic and fun, and Haru here is like the villain. I think it's so interesting. Take that lady in Kiki yeah. and make her the villain of this movie. One interesting character to make the villain character That's archetype. So I agree with you. No, why? The other lady. <laughs> okay, so well, much at more first, awesome. okay, at first when you watch Kiki, I'm like, oh, she's a bad lady, but then you're like, oh, she's fun. <laughs> I, didn't, I never bit. considered her a bad lady when I watched Kiki. I just saw her. She, to me, she's the wacky old lady. This lady is just crazy and needs to be locked up. <laughs> wow. Like, strong put her in a straight jacket. You don't, like. Oh, no. Oh, no. Did oh, her, I, I, I'm not okay if, with, like, putting her, like, putting homily in a jar or anything. But, like, yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily think. She you, punches <laughs> holes in the elastic, yeah. uh, cut, you know. So when she, okay. I, that you was know, a long it, pause. I was afraid, I was like, is she not gonna? She's gonna die. But then she poked holes, and yeah. I was like, Ooh. it's it's uh, I, yeah. I mean, I, ultimately, the Haru scenes aren't my favorites, but I do think it's like a very interesting choice for villain for this movie. Uh, the yeah. uh, kind of quirky old lady. But, um, but to go back to the like, you know, the the quote that is. Ooh, but <laughs> my thing is like, it's interesting to go that route when we're very clearly like they even say it in the movie. It's more about like an endangered species, exactly. which I think is a more compelling like argument that's going like uh, they're little people. Like, obviously, they're not like, you know, oh, these species of birds are going extinct, extinct. But like, that's much more like it's more about because of human interference and because like the danger they live in. Like, it's not like racism like it's this my my thing is also like if you're gonna do if you're gonna say that then your universe has to have like something established where real people and racism do not like coexist like racism is not a thing in this universe i mean yeah i mean we we, yeah we disagree with the phrasing but the the, the, you know the general point of the movie kind of like having some sort of commentary on uh, prejudice and you know talking about endangered species i think it's interesting i don't think my take would be like i don't think the movie really gets into it much so it's yeah, not a no. lot to comment on it's just like it posits these themes we know that the borrowers there's not a lot of them left that's just like the framing of their situation it's very much more of that like it just kind of ties more into the general miyazaki themes of like respecting nature exactly. and like 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 the natural order of things which is to like don't mess with stuff 
and then also that um, just kindness, which is why that's why I like show show is show is a little sweet boy and I love him. He's no so okay, but like, I mean, you know, he's a sweet boy. It's okay. <laughs> no um, one is so scary. Like, oh, so scary. This is the best boy. Like, it's just, you know, and again, that, that's what's more important is like this. Because that's that's really what we're, you know, there's the the, nat- the two natural instincts. Uh, and, it, you know, kind of, like, we have Sho who is kind and he just wants to get to know them and he thinks they're neat. Versus Haru who's like, I want to capture them and control them. Like, these are these are these two attitudes towards nature, mm-hmm. towards, and, you know, and people towards other people. But it's not... Like, that's what's more important. That is the message I am getting. And again, ties into literally every Miyazaki, like every Ghibli yeah. film. Like, this is what happens. Yeah. And it's great. That's what I'm here for. And Ariete is also a, like, kick butt girl. Well, she tries to be. Well, I don't really know if like she actually when, does. When uh, Show is like, wow. Because, okay, when she pulls that, yeah, like, she, knife boot, yeah. I was like, bro. <laughs> she, like, grapples up the curtain to, to unlock the window. Yeah, that's a great yeah, scene. Yeah, that was, like, awesome. Like, yeah. I wasn't ready, like, with for the knife boot. I was like, you had that the whole time? Why yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? <laughs> did she have it the whole time? I guess she did. I was uh, Was it in her bag? I don't remember oh, this. Dude, oh, she just, she, she clicks her boot. I'm like, knife boot? <laughs> She's got to be ready. Ready. It's a grappling uh, th- device, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think I think I think commentary on human nature with these different perspectives, I think, is a good call. And yeah, pr- pretty pretty light thematics compared to a lot of Miyazaki scripted oh, yeah. films. Um, but I think it you fits. Have to dig the... a little deeper, I think, with yeah. this movie versus you know some of the other ones we've covered. Yeah, other than you know, other than this conversation with Show, which which uh, is like horrible, yeah, but it, pretty, it pretty happens. Blatant, pretty blatant. Yeah, I mean, I do. Yeah, I mean, I think there's. Uh, I don't think. I don't think it's such a terrible scene. It's just, uh, I think, not as uh, magical as as some of the other. I mean, other Ali's ones. right. He's smiling the whole time, and it's like, bro, what's Show does not stop smiling. That's, That's all he does. My worst part. Well, no, he like I. I support him smiling, just not in that instance. I like think, when you're talking about. Okay, here I got it. And this isn't going to make Ali like it more, but here. Okay, so. <laughs> I think they do a good job of showing how serene show is throughout the movie. Mm -hmm. And I think, and then of course it gets explained in that he has a bad heart and he like can't be any other way or he'll die. And then that's kind of why, I mean, I was flipping out the whole last 30 minutes of the movie that this boy was about to like have a heart attack and die. And, you know, very much, I think that's why it gets so intense, you know, him running around and even Arietti's like, are, are you okay? Because he's sweating and like he's, you know, his demeanor changes a lot in like the last 30 minutes of the movie. Yeah, yeah. For, for sereneness is really interesting. Um, like because of his condition. It's kind of how he has to be. Like he um, just has to be chill and lay in bed and read. That's his life. I also feel like his uh, smile is covering up for his general sadness, that type of thing. Well, I mean, you okay. get to the end of the movie, like, you know, well, you, there is that whole conversation and he's like, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't know if, you know, it's going to go well. And then at the end of the movie, he's like, you gave me, like, you know, I'm, I want to live. And it's like, bro, you're like 12. <laughs> um, how, how about the, the cat at the end, Nia, um, who I feel like we don't hear the name of and gets name checked several times at the end of the movie. <laughs> she does get name checked. Um, <laughs> uh, the cat's amazing. Like, okay, so again, hadn't seen the movie. Uh, Michelle spoiled me when she was like, oh, yeah, and the grouchy cat. And then I was like, I'm looking forward to the grouchy cat. <laughs> and the grouchy cat delivered. Honestly, that's, I mean, there's a cat. We all like cats. You know our takes. The cat was the best part of the movie. <laughs> and then, well, I really did like that. I mean, it was super cliche and annoying, except, but like that Nia, granted, I thought she, okay, you're, you're all going to laugh at me about how stupid this is, but I thought she was going to like ride Nia back to the house. So did I. No, I, okay. been fun. I thought she was going to train her. I thought one of them was going to, if anybody, I thought Spiller would. Okay. I feel better. Okay. <laughs> yeah i mean I think nia's you know is like is uh she attacking them before and it's the the character growth where she helps uh yeah. at the incredible for the cat to have character growth when he was like <laughs> holding her back and i was like she's gonna eat her like i'm sorry like she's gonna I'm eat surprised, her yeah, I'm surprised she as a cat chance. owner it, this is the most the unrealistic part does. of the movie i guess because it looks like a human maybe it counts but um it looks like a attacks human. me all the time yeah, i'm sorry did you say the cat looks like a human <laughs> no, little people like, look like humans. Oh, Christ, that's okay. why she doesn't eat it. I'm supposed to like no, bugs. As a cat owner, that would okay. definitely entice her to. Like, all cats them. probably want to eat us. I mean, they are like just little tigers. Yeah, if we we're smaller, yeah, were, yeah. But apparently not. At least they formed enough of a bond, Arietta and Nia. I mean, um, when but... she touches the cat's nose, I was like, yes! Yes! yeah, how to train a dragon. <laughs> that's I don't know. Actually, that, that. though. 
And and then they uh, show and Ariadne say uh, have their goodbye, and show gives her the yep. sugar cube. Ariadne gives her a hair clip, which is which uh, was hair clip I, is a much more meaningful present. I just want yeah. y'all to know, like really. And then how is she going to tie her hair up again? What if she, she has can to find fight? another clip? Probably. Oh, uh, Fine. I don't know. That was like one of those clips that you have on your earphones. Those are hard to find. <laughs> Yeah, I was. Thank you for clearing that up for me. I was like, "What kind of clip is that?" <laughs> I, I assumed it was. At first, I thought okay. it was like a laundry clip, and then I was like, "It's way too small." Yeah, it gotta be a lot smaller. Yeah. Um, and then they sail away in the teapot, and it's pretty, pretty beautiful with the the music in the teapot. And, and yeah. no narration happens at oh, the yeah. end. Then it's perfect. yeah. Don't That's watch the dub. <laughs> you don't. Um, was, the, was the cast good enough to warrant it? I know nothing about it. Yeah, we can go through the cast. We have. Uh, Will Arnett as Silent Dad. Whoa, um, okay, I'm watching this movie. Silent Amy, Amy, Dad. Amy Poehler as Mom. Okay, um, I'm watching it. <laughs> how many games, no, okay, here's, here's, how many here's the actual... Amy Poehler in? I feel like she was in... A was lot. she in Ponyo or something? Yeah, I like think she's, she's in Ponyo. That's weird. I'm gonna look it up. Uh, no, the best one, Carol Burnett as uh, Haru. What? Really, that, that's that's, uh, ama- that's okay, incredible this, casting. How did they get her for this? This changes yeah. things for me. <laughs> I, I, that, that's why I would watch it for Carol Burnett. As, uh, yeah, the, the British dub has uh, Sir Ronan as uh, Arietti, which I, I love her. I'd love to see well, that. And, and Tom Holland, I think, in Tom Allen's first ever like, role in anything. As a Does show. he play show? Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Fu- oh, my God. Fu- future Oscar winner Olivia Coleman as Homily. And uh, That's nuts. Mark Strong as dad. Yeah, so, so That's both, a huge cast. What the heck? Both have, yeah, both have. You could have just kept the UK dub. I don't know why Disney yeah, needs that's, to re- redub that's what everything, I'm apparently. Um, yeah. And I don't know why this, this is like a recent movie. I don't know really why it got two dubs, but um, okay, you watch it three times, see which version's better. It'll be the Japanese, I assume. Um, <laughs> yeah. the, yes. I, I feel, honestly, I feel like watching it in English and having the English music, you know, like, I feel like the strikingness of the English lyrics over the Japanese movie is lost when you watch it in, uh, it in English. Is. But also, this sub- these subtitles were really wrong a lot of the time, and I was peeved about it. I know I messaged y'all about it, and it just was not good. To be yeah, fair, you do this every movie. Yeah, I do. Uh, <laughs> Like, this is by Ghibli's normal uh, subtitlers who are the official well, I was, subtitlers. I, can you hire me, Ghibli? I would do a much better job. I promise. You can. Yeah. What could I, like? What could even be wrong? The dialogue's not that like complicated. I feel. No, like, it's just uh, they like they phrase things like at one point in Japanese. Arietti's like they won't see me, but the translation they use is "I'll be fine," and I'm like, that is not what she said. Like, why don't you just do it literally? What's the big deal? Interesting. I can yeah, see cause... no. That's all. I can see that. That's frustrating with like interpretation. It's like you don't have to interpret that. <laughs> like, yeah, just, but I mean, what, what did you say? This is my thing. It's like I, I never know what's better, but I prefer personally because I like learning languages to know what they're really saying. Well, I mean, I think I mean, there's definitely different. Like obviously, when there's like you know stupid English idioms or things when they translate. Like oh, I'm thinking. Yeah backwards kind of like the uh no, well not backwards like we watch miraculous ladybug in french and then like the english dubs are freaking terrible <laughs> but uh yeah, we like, love no, the dub we love the we dub. do love the dub but like ooh, <laughs> but like, we love it because it's terrible that's yeah, at least true. no it's it's a good it's a good dub but that the it's it, we we compare it to the french and you get different meanings of stuff yeah. but no i think it's i think that it's an interesting point of noticing the literal and not a literal interpretation of we always talk about the subtitles being so uh sacred and the way to watch the movie but a lot of times the subtitles are interpretive as well it's just uh if that's really what going we for. all just need to learn japanese and watch them in japanese yeah do it join me so, yeah, you know the, the point being like uh if you subtitles not necessarily this pure experience even right um, yeah you know so maybe you know that this is why i try not to yell at people for watching dubs but when they do uh, things you know, like well, jennifer uh, then i can yell <laughs> jessica, jessica it was jessica. whatever jessica <laughs> jennifer could have should have been jennifer it was no. uh, as always miyazaki uh you know it's famously has said watch dubs i guess this plays into into Does maybe he some really of say reasoning. that you know, he wants you to experience it in your own cultural landscape, which the dub plays into. All yeah. right, that's his. That is such a Miyazaki quote. I'm like, it's it really the most. It's not the exact quote, but we've read the. Yeah, we've referenced this before. Point one um, to you, good sir. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Although they, you know, they've they've been opposed to some earlier bad dubs, but I feel like they've they've been good with with all the. Well, the I mean, Disney ones. has a bajillion dollars, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, we're still in still in the Disney period of the dubs here. Um. Any other? I think we've talked about all the characters. No, no. Aunt Sadako comments. 
Not really. Just, she's a Jennifer. sweet old lady. That's Jessica. Damn it. Jessica. Jessica, oh. te- Jessica. Miss Jessica showing them the dollhouse, I think, is her best. Now scene. I really, I, mean, I feel like oh, they yes. changed it because Sadako is like a ring character that most Americans are aware of. Maybe <laughs> so that was the reason. I think it's probably just because of Japanese name. Like they, but I didn't they even have, know that when you I, said that. I was like, what? show is way easier to pronounce, and they didn't have to change it to Sean. <laughs> show is easy. Oh, Sean. Oh, it's oh, just so Sean. dumb. I'm like, look, white people can deal with it, okay? Just this is stupid. <laughs> people say show instead of sure. You know how to say words. I can't. It, it, it is it is weird that you have these British names, like homily, I guess, with, with some Japanese names that the movie puts in. Um, yeah, are, like, are the little people supposed to be remnant of... Pa- Pod and Homily are from the books. Um, I don't know. I think that the kid, the show is named something different. Um, the, the Oh, he, no, he's just the boy in the books. So <laughs> he doesn't have a name. That's better than Sean. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe his real name is is Sean. <laughs> Egg, Egg Latina Clock. Apparently their name is Clock by Arietta Clock, but that's not in the movie. I Egg hate- Latina. Um, okay. <laughs> Hooms. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Actually, Hooms. I want to read the book to know about Egg Latina now. How do you um, spell it? E G G L E T I N A. Yeah. Oh, okay, never mind. E G E G G L I T N A. Are you joking? No, I'm so Egg Latina. Yeah, I'm just looking. Okay, now I have to look. I'm pretty sure. Okay, we're off top. Okay, it's on topic. Ali, any final thoughts on Ariety? I would like to watch it for a third time after our conversation because, like I said, every time we talk about these movies and I go in either liking it too much or not liking it enough, I come out with a different perspective. Um, yeah, I, I still don't like that racism take, but if you replace it with prejudice, this movie is like, again, like Delaney was saying, it ties into every single Ghibli movie that you should respect nature and that women should be respected also. Yeah, we could have talked more about the feminism of this movie. But I, I mean, it doesn't, it's with... not. I'm not going to say it's non-existent, but it is like predominantly just, female, uh, yeah, which is nice. Yeah, yeah the, the female characters drive the action, other than I guess Show, who yeah, like Darius is kind of like driving like, him, riding he, him. On he the... doesn't exhibit like toxic masculinity, like the dad does. I don't like that. Anyway, the dad's cool, but he he irks me. We could talk about the history of silent dads in Ghibli movies. It's pretty interesting going back to um, also just in Japan, not to be that. Yeah, person. well, it's yeah, yeah, it's 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 you know commenting on that archetype yeah. of, of Japanese dads. Yeah, um, pa- Pod a much more positive example of this. Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, than uh, the that's a, or the Takata earlier movie with uh, yeah the more abusive uh, silent dad. Um, the the yes, yeah, so, uh, Delaney, have any final thoughts before? um get I sidetracked just, again <laughs> no i just really like i just really loved this movie i i'm gonna rank it right under nausicaa whoa right yeah. under that's at your top that is yeah nausicaa's high. number one and then now it's, it's a per- personal favorite sure yeah. i'm gonna have to like get a list of the ones you have seen now because that's so high i'm shocked very high. it yeah. beats out ponyo that's not saying a lot. <laughs> that that no, Delaney loved. Ponyo. I love. We, we were Ponyo. very high on Ponyo. Ponyo's one of the guess. few I had seen before we started this. That's shocking. Are you sure you're gay? You like all the weird hetero movies. <laughs> <laughs> all all of these are hetero movies. No, I just like sweet little boys. Oh, that one. sounds really bad out of context. <laughs> oh, okay. okay, what I mean um, is, I like children being cute. Okay, done. We're gonna yes, we no, end I podcast it. now. Oh my god. Sasuke, yeah, Sasuke better than Sasuke's show, great, but of... they didn't have to kiss at the end. I know it's like a Little Mermaid thing, but that movie, I have a lot of feelings about that movie. We, we to love, be fair, we... she's a fish when it happens. Does that make you feel better? Oh. <laughs> It's a little peck to uh, turn her back in. She's just cute. Um, She's in a bubble. Did, did, like, are you there... saying you wanted uh, Arietti and Show to kiss? Oh, what? Sounds no. Like... Okay, I won't lie. I thought she was going like, to kiss his finger because I was expecting right? Something a full like hetero that, yeah. ending. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, was, like, I was like, oh, thank so God they more. didn't. Now, well, yeah. now, Allie, we haven't gotten to when Marnie was there, which is, yeah, so you know, we'll get there which is a end. very okay. special yeah. film. <laughs> That's I can't uh, wait yeah. For that speaking movie. of, that is, for that, uh, that is this director. That was also uh, Yona Bayashi's yeah. next movie. So we'll yeah, and uh, when Marnie uh, was there. see, I just learned that I was today years old when, and now I'm very angry with her. <laughs> but we'll get to it eventually. We will. Uh, we'll. Yeah, we'll see when Marnie's. I'm interested if we like that more. Well, going into it all, I, I think I like Darietti more, but we'll see when we get to there. Um, different type of movie. Uh, so that's it for Arietti. I think we had some fun discussion about this movie. I really enjoyed watching it again. Next, we have another, I think, my opinion, good um, 
more later Ghibli movie of uh, from up on Poppy Hill. Um, so mm-hmm. we will be getting into everything from that movie. Going to be some different topics, I think, to discuss on that <laughs> one. Similarly, I love the music on that movie. Also, how about that as a comparison? Yeah, it's a good thing. Two, two of my favorite soundtracks for sure from Studio Ghibli. Um, but find all the all of our contact info overlyanimated.com and if you want to support us our patreon is patreon.com slash overly animated thanks to our current patrons especially our patron of the podcast steve and thanks as always to our patron executive producers ryan steve alex beaches hugh michael needle and phonician um yep we'll be back with poppy hill next week thanks for listening guys we will see you then bye bye bye